The movie begins with Catherine Carlyle, who is the wife of a successful producer in the film industry. She lives in a gigantic, lavish mansion, but still feels like something is missing from her life. She keeps thinking of a passionate encounter that she had with a stranger at a bar some years ago. For her, that was the most romantic experience of her life. In the next scene, she becomes fully absorbed in her lines as she films an audition video for a role in acting. As she waits for the video to upload on her computer, she starts cleaning the house. Soon after, she realizes that her gardener George hasn't arrived today. But before she can call the gardening company herself, she suddenly receives a phone call informing her that George has been detained and that a replacement gardener has been assigned to her. Even though she's still confused about what happened, she ends up opening the door to find her handsome new gardener, Ben Saunders. She shows Ben around the house and tells him all about the work that needs to be done outside in the garden. But unfortunately, she accidentally ends up locking herself out. Seeing this, Ben offers to help her out, but on one condition, that she won't involve the police. Once Catherine agrees, Ben swiftly picks the locks and leaves right after. As he walks away, he makes a cryptic comment about people being all rounded up and leaves Catherine wondering. Later that day, her husband Richard comes home and the couple sits by the pool for a while. She tries to talk to him about how excited she is to have new neighbors soon, but he ends up ignoring her completely. At dinner, she complains about a wobbly table that they need to fix soon. Afterward, Richard suggests watching a movie, and Catherine finds the opportunity to bring up her audition role. To this, he insists that she should earn her roles on her own. As the couple watches the movie, neither of them appears interested at all. Then, Catherine asks him to light the fireplace, and Richard walks down to the basement absent-mindedly to turn on the gas. But when the camera pans out, we see an unknown person lurking in a dark corner of the garage. Who could it be? Inside the house, Catherine decides to dress up in an attractive outfit for her husband at night. But when she steps out of the dressing room, she quickly realizes that he's already asleep and changes out of her nightwear. She's disappointed and unsatisfied. The next morning, Catherine seems to be getting more and more frustrated with her acting career. Ben arrives at his usual gardening time and offers gardening advice as well as his aspiration to become a landscape architect. Unimpressed, Catherine shuts the door and goes back inside. She video calls a friend and tries to discuss acting opportunities, but is dismissed there as well. Later, she decides to offer Ben some lemonade by the pool to thank him for helping her open the door the other day. He starts asking her about her dreams, and she shares that she recently worked on a short film that's premiering online. Ben also shares that he's an aspiring rapper, so the two end up bonding over their goals. After a while, Catherine unintentionally ends up offending Ben by calling him a renaissance man. Later, she asks him to fix the wobbly table inside and then stay to help her practice her lines. They end up filming a scene together, but Ben says that the script is corny, and Catherine thanks him and tries to pay in for his time. Offended once again, Ben storms off and Catherine decides to chase after him. She apologizes for her insensitivity, and he makes her realize how she has everything she wants compared to him, yet she doesn't appreciate it at all. He believes in his worth and his ability to help others, so he asks her not to offer payment for everything. Catherine is left speechless and embarrassed, and Ben leaves. Later in the day, Catherine finds a belt left behind by Ben and wears it around her neck. She starts contemplating all the dirty thoughts that she's having about him. In the evening, when Richard comes home, she tries to make a move on him once again but is rejected. Instead of focusing on his wife, Richard is more concerned about the celebration that he's planned for tonight. Catherine starts getting excited because she thinks it's all for her, but that quickly fades into disappointment when she realizes that he's just celebrating because he booked a high-profile actor. She spends the rest of the night detached and distracted. The next morning, she hears loud music from the supposedly empty house next door and goes by the pool to investigate. Suddenly, Ben shows up claiming that the side door was open. Catherine gets a little suspicious since he wasn't supposed to work that day, but he confesses that he came to ask her out to brunch. Instead of going out, Catherine suggests cooking for him inside. During this encounter, the new next-door neighbor Ed Hogate shows up, and she invites him inside as well. Ed tells Catherine about his work in Silicon Valley for a mobile app. A few moments later, Catherine starts cooking burgers for everyone and Ben joins her to help. He starts asking about her relationship with her husband, and she confesses that they met a long time ago, and he's the one who pursued her. However, she also ends up telling him that sometimes she questions if she truly loves him anymore. Sometime later, Ben tells her how he loved the short film that she was in because he watched it the night before. After that, 
She asks the two men to finish grilling burgers while she goes inside to change. When she returns, she finds Ben and Ed in the living room with beers in their hands. Ben apologizes for helping himself to the alcohol, but Catherine seems to be okay with it. She ends up returning Ben's belt from the other day, and then all three of them decide to play some music. While Ed plays the piano, Ben and Catherine engage in a slow dance. In their tipsy state, they end up kissing each other, but she quickly pulls away when she realizes that this is wrong. Behind her, Ed and Ben get into an argument, and Ed storms off. She encourages Ben to leave as well, because she needs to sober up before picking Richard up from the airport, but he doesn't leave. Instead, Ben asks her for one final toast, and she agrees. However, they don't just stop at one toast. They keep drinking and end up kissing once again. Then, the scene switches to two days ago. We see both Ben and Ed Hogate again, but this time they're on a hill near Beverly Hills contemplating ways to get money. It turns out that Ben's real name is Duke, and Ed is his friend named Oates. They saw Catherine refueling her convertible and decided to follow her. They threatened another wealthy-looking man into following her car until she reached home. Then the two of them survey the perimeter and search for the best entry and exit points through the hedge. They also started stalking Catherine every day, noticing her as she sat by the pool all alone. The two men decided to sneak into the empty house next door and stay there until they could put their plan into action. And when Duke saw Georgie, Catherine's real gardener, he got the idea of getting him detained and posing as a new gardener to get into her house. They aim to deceive Catherine into believing that Duke is the new gardener and continue to keep an eye on her from the empty house. While the two men eat their dinner in the abandoned house, they talk about how the couple next door must be indulging in luxurious dinners every night. Owen says that he wishes to have a dinner like that at least once in his life. Duke says that he'd like to sit in Catherine's white convertible, and that's exactly what the two of them did that night. Remember the man hiding in the corner when Richard came downstairs to turn on the gas? It was Oates. At the same time, Duke was crouched down on his seat inside the convertible, but Richard never saw either of them. Over the next few days, Oates is seeing how Duke is bonding with Catherine, and that wasn't a part of their initial plan. All they wanted was some money from wealthy people who had too much of it, plus the additional perk of being with an attractive woman. Oates started accusing Duke of only wanting Catherine for himself, which leads to a heated confrontation between the two. Duke pushes Oates against the wall and challenges him to violence if he wants, but Oates recoils in fear, and Duke successfully asserts his dominance by saying that they will proceed according to his plan. In the next scene, Duke is watching Catherine's online film and practices, confessing his admiration for her. He realizes that he might be getting too emotionally invested in this woman. The next morning, it is time to put the main part of their plan into action. This is when Oates comes to Catherine's house and introduces himself as Ed Hogate, and the three of them have burgers and alcohol together. But when Oates sees Duke kissing her, he's furious at his friend's betrayal and storms off. After that, Duke carries drunk Catherine to the master bedroom. Taking advantage of this vulnerable moment, he tells her about Oates's true identity and confesses that he loves her. But even after hearing everything, she still refuses to be with him. Duke thinks that he's just resisting because she's laying down in her husband's bed, so he carries her to the neighboring house instead. Meanwhile, Richard gets off his plane and waits anxiously at the airport. He calls Catherine, and when she doesn't respond, he starts worrying. At the abandoned house, Catherine keeps rejecting Duke's advances, and he realizes that she genuinely doesn't want to be with him. He leaves the room and lets Oates have her instead. Once Oates is inside the room, he moves towards her forcefully and covers her mouth with his hand. He threatens to kill her if she resists anything. But before he could do anything, Oates gives up and breaks down in tears. This allows Catherine to try and escape the situation. On the other side, Richard gets into a taxi and keeps calling his wife who still hasn't answered. He's seriously worried about her now. In the house, Catherine is still drunk, so she falls to the ground quickly when Duke strikes her. Oates tries to intervene, but the two men end up falling in the pool. Oates accidentally drops his knife, and Duke grabs it to stab Oates in the back. He hits a nerve that leaves him completely paralyzed, so he's left floating in the pool while he bleeds. Duke abandons his friend to go and get Catherine instead. She tries to find a phone to call the police, but he tears out all the phone lines. Desperate to flee, she sees Oates moaning in agony, while his blood is mixing with the pool water completely. At that moment, she decides to jump into the pool to hide herself under his body in the water. But in an attempt to regain Duke's trust, Oates calls out that she's beneath him. Catherine begs him to stay silent, 
and when he refuses, she simply turns him over and submerges his face in the water. Since he's paralyzed, he can't do anything now. He screams silently underwater, unable to come up for air. Catherine watches him as he takes his final breaths. Then she stays under him to hide while Duke searches everywhere for her. At that moment, Richard finally arrives home and looks at the chaotic scene in horror. He rushes to the pool where he sees Catherine coming up from the water and screaming for help. Unfortunately, Duke is right there with a knife in hand. The two men start attacking each other and get into a physical fight. Meanwhile, Catherine manages to slip out of the pool and finds a gun that they have at home. And before he could harm her husband, she shoots Duke. She takes a few more shots to make sure he's dead and then stares at his lifeless body as Richard comes up to her. The two of them share an emotional hug. In the last scene of the movie, Catherine gets a significant role for herself which helps her regain her confidence and achieve success once again. The story's lesson is to find happiness and be grateful for what you have. Even if you feel bored or unsatisfied, remember that someone else might be facing tougher challenges. And that's all for the movie recap. If you were Catherine, how would you outsmart those pesky thieves? Share your ideas in the comments below. If you liked this video, we're sure you'll like this even more. Click now to watch.